Year One pupils at Rainsford Lower School in Bedfordshire are investigating materials for an art project. We'll see how the resources are explored in a variety of ways and how pupils are encouraged to develop their own language skills as part of the process. We return to the class three weeks later to see how they've developed the theme and show how pupils use self-evaluation to assess the outcome of a weaving project. We're going to be thinking about the word fabric, what it means, what kind of things are made from a fabric. Shirt. A shirt, so clothes that we wear are made from fabrics. Toy bears. Toy bears. They are made from fabric, aren't they? Blankets. Blankets are made from a fabric. Just lots of other pieces of like paper and soft things. Then we're going to link into that their own situations where they have brought items in from home that they particularly like, particularly feel good about. And I would guess that an awful lot of those things would be toys. You're going to identify and describe the textures. What does texture mean? Oliver? If it's rough or smooth, um, it doesn't mind, but it's um, what it feels like. Fantastic. I asked you to bring in a special piece of fabric, okay, something that you really like from home. We're going to start off our lesson today by looking at those things. I work part-time here, so I cover classes so that teachers can have their workload released, their 10%. My role is to support the staff in delivering the art curriculum. We talk about the different projects that uh, are planned and how they're going to resource it and how I can help them resource it. This is a new topic for me, one that I hadn't covered before. So Gillian and I sat down and went through the QCA plans to see how we could adapt that to my class. I'm very conscious also that I have a mixed class. It's mixed reception and year one, although the majority of it is year one. So we wanted to be sure that we pitched it at the right level for both sets of children. Now in here you've got lots of different samples of fabric. What we want you to do is to take each of the pieces out. We want you to feel it. And we want you to talk to your partner and tell your partner how it makes you feel when you touch different kinds of fabrics. Some of them you might like, others you might not like the feel of. It's the second in a series of lessons on a project that's called Investigating Materials. They're also going to be looking at samples of fabrics, talking about what fabrics are, and um, sorting fabrics by their own criteria and talking about that. It feels bumpy. When you roll it, it feels bumpy. I don't like this. Okay, it why? It hurts my fingers. Okay. I like the balloon because it's really um, soft and smooth. And I like this because it's stretchy and oh. feels nice. Thank you. I think the issue of providing enough resources is uh, quite a challenge. Yes. So that children can make good, positive, conscious choices about what they're doing. I was looking at the words that have been highlighted, those particularly relevant to this topic. Mm -hmm. We've got colour, texture and textile. I was thinking about vocabulary particularly. Yes. I thought we could run a vocabulary list that we could share both with art and science. If you have a vocabulary list visible, that the children feel empowered to add to, then they own it. So that's all part and parcel of them taking the vocabulary on board. So the teacher will be adding to that vocabulary list and the children will be adding to that vocabulary list. I feel that if that list is visible and is being used daily, it becomes part of their thinking. This topic also links in with a science topic that we're doing, which is sorting and using materials. Those two topics are running alongside each other, so we're able to focus on particular materials with this topic, but also expand on it in, in other areas, looking at um, other, other different types of materials in more depth. Let's find out all the different ways that we've sorted our fabrics. 
Adam, how did you sort your fabrics? I put one half in the soft side, then plastic in the middle and drapey on the other side. If this was in the pot, and I took it out, and I like, did a fill of it, yes. I put it in the nice side, and if I got this out of it, I don't really mind it. And, it. and when I got this out, I thought, oh, so I'd be on the no. horrible side. And you want the stretchy thing for this one. And then all the bumpy ones in that one. And then I'm putting them in three. So I'm putting the stretchy in this area. And then I'm putting bumpy in this area. We're then going to look at how the fabrics are made. I'll be giving them magnifying glasses to be able to look very closely at those fabrics. And throughout all of that, I'm hoping that we're going to pick up that fabrics are made through knitted fabrics, crocheted, bonded, felt, woven fabrics, that type of thing. So we're looking at different types of fabrics. I can see a little hole because, because um, it has holes in it and I see a little hole. We need to have yes. a thorough understanding of how that works. Yes. That way they will have an understanding of what warp and weft means. Mm. I found out uh, this is nice and soft. Mm. And nice and bumpy and soft. Mm. Before they can start to make conscious choices about what they are going to make, they have to have an understanding of how fabric is made, what decisions they have to make. So it's very much... Um, a process model rather than a product model. So Debbie, how, how did that lesson go? Um, it went quite well. I was extremely pleased with um, how, how much of an interest they took in all the different um, fabrics. I feel that they firmly understand the word fabric now. They enjoyed talking about them to their partner when they came up to talk about it to the rest of the class, they were explaining where the toy had come from and how much oh, it cost yes. and yes. that type of thing. They were giving you a background on it. It's got a longer string than my dad has. When it flies, and I like it when it goes really high when I'm out, it's out of sight. At London, there was this toy shop and it had loads of toys in it and, my, and I said, can I have this dog? I just do this, this, and then I just do it where where the part is hurt, and then then it gets then like magic, it 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 gets better. I found out some of the materials are loose, and I like putting them apart. I found out that this is actually. Um, made out of a shirt. Well, I blue on it. A blue? A blue shirt. Okay. When you take something apart, it's called deconstruct. What did we have to do to take it apart? To um, pull that. Okay. How does it stay in there? It's been slipped together. Okay. Weaving. It's a woven piece of material. What about this one? How did that? I think it's made out of plastic. Oh, this was interesting. What is it? It's fabric because it's been cut and it's got straight edges. Okay, and uh, a machine makes it because um, um, the, um, people who knit can't make it that straight. What didn't come out was I was trying to bring out the the natural fabric and the man-made fabric. Mm -hmm. Plastic. Why do you think it wasn't made? Because I think it grew on something. Okay, you think plastic grew on something? That will be covered in yeah. your science. Oh, it is. So it is. So that's why I'm not concerned there. about it because, no. in fact, that is the the focus of the first lesson of science Great. is to be looking at the fabrics mm. and or looking at materials and talking about whether they're natural or man-made. Mm -hmm. So. Good. Three weeks later, the pupils are encouraged to evaluate the outcome of a weaving project. Amy, how did you know that that was your weaving? It was all pink. Okay, so that was your choice of... Colour. 
colour. Good girl, colour. I picked my nail straight away because it had blue tissue paper, that on there, that, a straw, and that, and that. Okay, good girl. When I ripped that just now, it made a nice sound as well. Okay. I don't I just did it like that. Under, over, under, over. It doesn't really matter what the colours are, as long as you like them. How did you choose your colours? Um, I just thought about them very carefully. Okay. Ten times carefully. What does it feel like? It feels like a tiger. It feels a bit like a tiger. What a good description. In the middle of your tables, we're going to find a sheet of paper that has three boxes on it. Okay, at the top it says investigating materials because that's what we've been doing over the last few weeks. The first box says stick a picture of your weaving here. Now last night when you went home I took a picture of all of your weavings and I've printed them out for you. You just stick them on here so that that will remind you because we can't keep your weavings in the books can we? No. So we're going to have a picture instead. Okay, the next bit you can see a smiley face, a sad face and an okay face. Just colour in one of those to tell us what you think about your weaving. If you really liked it, the smiley face. If you really don't like it, then it will be this one. And if you're not too sure, then the one in the middle. And then the final bit at the bottom, it says, what would you change to make it better? So you have to look really closely at your weaving and think, what can I do? To make it better, just one sentence, that's all you need to do. Do you like it? They filled in the evaluation sheets. They were fascinated at having photographs of their own work, mm, which they could put on there and keep as evidence. Nearly all of them had filled in the smiley faces. Yes, to say they were I pleased. bet, I yeah. bet. What about changes? A few of them thought that they might change some of the colours. Mm -hmm. One of the little girls said that she wanted to put beads on hers. Yeah. And did we get more vocabulary coming out? Oh yes, yes, yes. They used a lot of the vocabulary that we've been teaching them all the way through. Right. We had to think very carefully about the colour and the texture. And we also have to feed in and out, don't we? We have to go in and out. What are those strips called? Yeah. That's the loom, that's the warp, and the other one is the weft. Fantastic. Well done, Megan. So the children have thoroughly enjoyed what they were doing. Yes. Um, and you can see that from the results and also yeah. watching them do it. Display is, is a very important area of what we do. So that's, of yes. course, sort of valuing them, valuing their yes. work. Yes, yes. Um, being proud of it. Yes. All those lovely, yes. positive self-esteem elements. I was a bit concerned about it at the outset. Well, I felt that I didn't have the skills required to be able to teach it because it's something I've not done before. But um, I have really enjoyed teaching mm. this and I can see from the children they've benefited yeah. from it. What I'm hoping we're doing with the art curriculum here is raising children who notice, who look around them. And what we want to be doing is making sure we're producing adults who can do that, who can be curious and really talk about and think about what it is they're seeing.